Hello and welcome to class. Let's take a look at introduction to calculus. Okay, so this is going to be the first in a series of calculus classes where we will be talking about differentiation and integration. And have no fears about this. It's quite simple. Just get your pen and your paper and let's get to work. I'm Uncle Ed. So by the end of this class, you should be able to apply the idea of limits in finding the y dx and also differentiating polynomials from first principle and you should be able to differentiate polynomials also using the rule that if y equals ax raised to the power of n then the y dx equals a n x raised to the power of n minus one so all these are what we should be able to achieve by the end of this class. A little look about calculus. Now, the history of mathematics shows that the development of calculus was actually credited to Sir Isaac Newton, who was, um, you know him, a popular physicist, and Gottfried Wilhelm, which was also a physicist and mathematician too. So the introduction of calculus created an explosion in the development of the physical sciences and other area of sciences as calculus provided a way of describing natural and physical laws in a mathematical form which is easily understood. So changes that occur in nature need to be put in mathematical form. And that is what these two guys did. So if we have to define what calculus is, we say calculus is the study of things that change. Remember, changes occur in nature. And when we find ways to represent these changes in a mathematical form, that is the aim. So the symbol delta will be used to represent change. So for example, delta y is to be read as the change in y. Is that clear? Okay. So let's proceed and take it a step further. We're going to be looking at the gradient function. With a vertical axis, that is the y-axis and the x-axis of this graph, which is plotted. The curve is actually y equals x squared with coordinates p and q, or points p and q. This curve has a tangent which is the blue line and the gradient line, which is the red line. So take note, the gradient function of curves is found by considering small increments in x and y, denoted by symbols delta x and delta y respectively. Delta x is regarded as a single quantity and not as a product of delta and x. The same also applies with delta y. So their squares are written as delta x squared and delta y squared. What are we saying? From this curve, we can see points P, which coordinates x, y. There is a shift in the x-axis when you move from P to Q. There's also a shift on the y-axis when you move from P to Q. That little shift is what we call change or delta. So for the x-axis, we have delta x, and for the y-axis, we have delta y. So it is no complex theory at all. So from the graph, p and q are the points on the curve y equals x squared. PR is delta x, that is a change in x. YRQ is delta y. ON is x plus delta x, and NQ is y plus delta y. Hence, the coordinates of Q, like you can see. The gradient of a chord, PQ, is RQ over PR. That is, change in Y over change in X. This measures the average rate of Y compared with X between P and Q. So, at P, Y equals X squared. Now, because there is an addition from P to Q, there has been a movement. Y equals X squared becomes Y plus change in Y equals, open bracket, X plus change in X 
close bracket alt square subtracting y from both sides of the equation we have that changing y becomes open bracket x plus changing x all squared minus x squared so we actually replace y with x squared we expand x plus changing x all squared we have x squared plus 2x changing x plus changing x squared plus x squared so x squared is going to cancel out x squared from the beginning and at the end of the equation what we are left with is 2x dx plus dx squared so change in y over change in x which is delta y delta x becomes 2x plus delta x this is the gradient of the chord pq in the limit as change in x tends to zero change in y also tends to zero Therefore, Q tends to P, and the chord PQ virtually coincides with the tangent of P. Once those changes, those movements start reducing to zero, the line, that is the red line, actually moves straight and becomes the same with the tangent line. So it's important that you note that what we just did was what we call differentiation with first principle. The gradient of the tangent at P is given as limiting change in X to zero delta Y over delta X equals 2x plus delta X equals 2x so now in other words once you see delta X tends to zero what you simply do is replace delta X with zero so the equation becomes 2x the expression limiting delta x to 0 delta y de delta x is usually abbreviated to delta y de over delta x so that delta y delta x becomes 2x plus delta x so limiting delta x to 0 delta y delta x becomes 2x the dy dx is 2x the same thing so when we limit the change in x to zero y also changes then the, the change in y also tends to zero so we now have dy dx which is 2x dy dx is called the differential coefficient of y with respect to x and the process of finding the differential coefficient of a function is called differentiation so if y equals x squared and the y dx equals 2x we say that the derived function or derivative of x squared is 2x take a break for 10 seconds Okay, so let's proceed with an example. Our example says, if y equals x cubed, find the derived function dy dx. So let x increase to x plus change in x, and y increase to y plus change in y. So there's been a movement from x to y, x to x plus change in x, and y to y plus change in y. Therefore, y equals x cubed, Remember, that is the equation we're given. So the equation becomes y plus change in y equals open bracket x plus change in x all cubed. Subtracting y from both sides, we have change in y equals open bracket x plus change in x all close bracket all cubed minus x cubed. Remember, remember y equals x cubed. So change in y. When you expand x plus change in x all cubed, would have x cubed plus 3x squared dx plus 3x the change in x squared plus change in x cubed minus x cubed. Proceeding further, we have a 3x squared change in x plus 3x change in x squared plus change in x cubed. 
which is the same as changing y or changing x equals 3x squared plus 3x changing x plus changing x squared. So act we actually we got this by simply dividing through by changing x. So when we limit delta x to 0, we have delta y delta x to be equal to 3x squared. So limiting delta x to 0 cancels out 3x delta x and the x delta x squared. So you can see now how we got the y dx to be equal to 3x squared. Now here are the simple rules of differentiation. Now that would help you in quickly differentiating polynomials. There are many rules for differentiating functions of x, but these generally depend on the type of function, whether it is algebraic function, a trigonometric function, a logarithmic function, exponential, and so on and so forth. So for this class, we'll look at a simple rule for differentiation, differentiating algebraic functions and polynomials to be more precise. From the examples we've looked at, it is clear that the derivatives can be gotten without having to go through finding dy dx from first principle. Yes, we didn't need to have to go through all those. So in general, if y equals x raised to the power of n, then dy dx is nx raised to the power of n minus 1. That is the rule. If you use this rule, you're going to have your answers quickly for polynomials. Remember, for polynomials, that is algebraic functions. So, change in differentiating x raised to the power of 5 with respect to x becomes 5x raised to the power of 4. Same rule also applies when we have a constant multiplier, for instance. So, we have y equals ax raised to the power of n, that is, there is a constant in front of x. Then, the y dx becomes a n x raised to the power of n minus 1. So, you multiply n times a, and you subtract 1 from the power. So, differentiating 4x cubed, we have 4 times 3 x cubed which gives us 12x squared. So that is how we differentiate. That is the simple rule for differentiation, for differentiating polynomials. We're going to be looking at differentiating trigonometric ratios and uh, functions in our next class. So here is your home exercise. Try this and differentiate the following functions from first principle with respect to x. So we have 5x squared, 3x squared plus 5x, and 3x squared minus 7x minus 14. Thank you.